This is How to Be an Actor on After Buzz TV. It's our first episode, and we are talking about how to have the right attitude to be an actor. You're tuned in to After Buzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz begin. Yes, fame. What we're all looking for. We are here on How to Be an Actor. Hi, my name is Sean Whalen, and I'm the host of How to Be an Actor with Sean Whalen. Ironic, isn't it? And (laughs) then I have next to me my uh, fabulous and wonderful co-hostess, Roxy Stryer. Fabulous and wonderful now. Yes. Wow. And is hostess okay? Or should I say host? Just or should a, it be? Just a co-host. Just a co-host. Yeah. My co-host. All right. Although Roxy I did host this at a restaurant for a very long time, so it depends where we are. Uh, yeah, yeah. We're here at After Buzz TV, so uh, unless we're serving sandwiches, I think we're all good. You never know. You never what know. What I have under this things, gas. Things can get crazy here. <laughs> uh, welcome to our show. It's our first episode, and I'm Sean Whalen, and I am an actor, writer, producer, director, um, looper. I've done a lot of things in the entertainment industry, and I'm very interested in helping people learn about the show part, the acting and the craft and the business and how they merge. Why am I qualified to teach this or or, uh, host this show? Um, I am an acting teacher. I've been a SAG member for almost 30 years. Coming up 2019 is going to be my 30 year anniversary of having my SAG card as a working actor. You got to celebrate that I'm somehow. Going, it's, I'm more excited about that than my birthday next year. Well, I don't know it's why. a bigger deal. You actually it's did a little something. Bit of, yeah, I did something. Just, like, to be able to breathe and walk the planet is not as exciting as to be able to do that. Um, <laughs> I started at the Growling Theater, then I studied at Playhouse West, uh, founded by Jeff Goldblum and Bob Carnegie. And then I got some commercial work. Uh, One of my commercials, the Milk Commercial, got very famous. Steven Spielberg liked it, really kicked off my theatrical career. And I've been working since, uh, like I said, um, 89. And I've also uh, taught improv. I've taught scene study. I've done that for a long time. I've written plays. I've produced plays. I've written and directed short films. I've done a lot of things in the industry, and the most exciting thing that Roxy really liked was that I have literally done every genre of entertainment possible, meaning kid show TV, um, big budget, low budget, all types of acting. And I thought, as of recently, that I hadn't done a Western, and then a friend of mine said, hey, this thing you did for Ang Lee was a Western. So I've actually done every genre that there is, big budget, small budget, sci-fi, horror, tons. You know you've done a lot of work when you think you haven't done something, and then and one someone, of your friends has to remind you, no, you yeah, did a Western. Yeah, I've actually <laughs> did a Western. So uh, that is um, why I am here, to try to help you navigate through the entertainment industry while still remaining true to the art form of acting. And it's, it's a tough merging of the two. Yeah, there's a lot of other um, resources out there for people, a lot of platforms, but I Mm -hmm. think that what's interesting is that people need to remember where they're getting their advice from and why I'm so excited about this show is because of all of those reasons. You are and have been for decades a working actor, somebody who is living it every day and is doing it. So And the highs and the lows of it. You know, there's and you say working actor is yes. Technically, you can be working and getting residuals and things like that, but you can have very lean years. I've had side jobs even after I started, and, you know, we're going to talk about all of that, the roller coaster, um, everything, everything. So one segment that we're going to do every week, um, we're going to talk about what's been happening in my career this week. Um, That will be all aspects of my career, the teaching, writing, producing, all of it. So this week, yeah, um, what happened, John? This week, uh, on the writing aspect, uh, Roxy was able to come see a play that I produced over at three clubs in Hollywood and Vine, and we ran that show for nine months, and we were got some interest to write it as a pilot. So my partner and I started to work on that. We got a first draft. We were kind of excited about it. Gave it to our producers. They gave us notes that made a lot of sense that we kind of missed our mark. And so we're taking a week off, studying a bunch of pilots, and we're going to regroup and start again next week. Uh, Teaching-wise, I just finished my first round of improv classes at uh, Playhouse West, and we're starting up in September again. 
And then acting wise, uh, it's been a little bit of a slow summer. It's it's uh, Gessler season is starting up again. So I went out last week on um, a show NCIS as a really creepy stalker guy. Um, and it was weird. I was a little nervous when I went back in, but I thought, oh, even after all this time, if you haven't done it in a while, when you go back, you go, oh, I've I haven't been practicing as much. When was the last time you had an audition, if you don't mind Probably me asking? Probably like four weeks before that. I had some self-tape things and, and jobs I was offered. But, yeah, it'd been like a month. Okay. So, so when you're rusty a little bit, when you go back in, you, and, and it was great because I'd done it long enough, and that's what I want to impart to you guys is you go, oh, that's okay because I hadn't done it in a little while. It's not like, oh, no, I'm failing and everything's spiraling downward. Just that in itself. And then... Because I did so, kind of, you know, broke the ice on that. A few days later, I uh, did a comedy audition for the show Speechless, and uh, it seemed to go really well. I was, really had a good time, and they actually pinned me, which means I made, like, the final few people. And then just a couple days ago, they released me. But that's part of it. But it felt good to shake off that first audition, do well on the second one, and, and already get So pinned. for anyone who doesn't know, what is what does that process look like? So you go in, you audition. You go in, you audition with the casting director. Now a lot of times they have you casting on tape for producers. So then they don't have to gather all the producers, pull them from the set, pull them from the writing rooms, put them in a room. What they do is uh, they'll put it on tape, and then they'll they'll pick the ones they like the best and send those to the producers. The producers will pick their top few, and then there's you know the politics that we have nothing to do with that might have to do with you know uh, a cousin of the producer or a star's name, or they just did something on this show, and then they pick their final person. And so in that last process, they pin you, meaning you're on hold for the dates that they're shooting. And so I was put on hold, which means I made the cut of the last final few people, which is great. So I feel good about that. So a lot going on. And uh, and this week I'm starting a podcast. Where is that? Yeah. Huh. At After Buzz TV. So that was another thing <laughs> I was uh, preparing for. So listen, let's jump into today. Yeah. That's a lot in your week, though, Sean. It's that's a lot, a lot in my going week. on. It's a lot going on. It never ends. Plus, I'm a father of two teenage girls. And I'm going to leave let you that, that sink in. I'm yeah. Let that, yeah, I'm going <laughs> to just let that gravity uh, sink in. All right. So this week, when you want to start acting, uh, a lot of people, you know, ask me the about headshots, and they ask me about all these different things. Um, Steve Martin famously said, it goes around the acting community, saying, "Shouldn't you worry about being good first? And I agree with that. But I think there's something just as equally uh, as important, and that is having the right attitude. You have to have the right attitude to get into this crazy business because it's a crazy business. And then I've broken down um, 10 facets of having the right attitude that I think everybody should have. Because this must be so important if you chose for the first episode the most important thing that people need to start with yeah, is I, well, this. Well, here's the thing. When I was casting my play... Um, we would have people get names and go, oh, they're amazing, they're amazing. And they go, yeah, but they're kind of a pain to work with. And we'd cross them off. And they could be fabulous actors. And I've heard this a million times, and I've heard it from casting directors, and um, I've heard it from makeup artists and producers, directors. If you're hard to work with and you don't have the right attitude for this business, they don't want to work with you, no matter what your talent is. Some, If you're so good like uh, Daniel Day-Lewis and Meryl Streep or someone who's so good. And they're fabulous people, by the way. But if you're that good, then maybe you could be a jerk a little bit. But when you're starting out, no one, especially now, no one has time for that. So these 10 things we're about to go over, mm -hmm. are you saying if somebody's home listening to this right now, if they don't off the bat have these 10 things, they should give up? Or no, you're saying these are 10 not. things that can be learned? You can learn them and, and change the way you think. I, look, I'm a huge believer in changing the way you thought. I never thought you could. Then I went through kind of a rough time, went to therapy, read some books, and changed the way I thought. And the world opened up for me. So I do believe everybody can change who they are and what they're doing. So um, these can be learned. Um, some are innate. And I'll you know go and say, listen, if you, uh, if you vomit every time you walk into a movie theater or turn on the TV, this isn't for you. Probably not. I, probably not. <laughs> so I'm going to say that off the bat. But other ones, yes, you can learn. So let's jump in. Yeah, let's With do it. With number one, okay? Number one is be yourself, okay? 
the only person that you can sell honestly in this business uh, in acting is yourself. So don't try to make a fake version of yourself. Don't have a fake attitude. Um, don't try to sell yourself as something you're not because eventually it's going to come out. It's going to come out. Everyone's going to know you're a phony or it's going to show up in your acting because acting is a super honest craft and you have to be really true to who you are. What does that mean specifically, though? Does that mean don't dye your hair because that's not no, natural? No, that means, that means actually go with who you are and what you like about yourself at that time. So when I started out, I had really high spiked hair only because I liked it, not because I thought, ooh, spiked hair is really the thing right now. It's because I liked wearing my hair that way. That was you. That was me. And so people said, he's got a goofy face, but he's got a punk rock haircut. That's funny. And that's where I got hired. But I didn't do it because I crafted that. I did it because uh, that's who I was. And that helps your attitude because people like people who are authentic. They just do in this business. If you are who you are, and some people go, well, this casting director, she's really harsh. This casting director is really nurturing. Since we're doing a... Uh, a kids movie let's do the nurturing one but for the action one let's do the harsh it doesn't matter they, they'll, they'll pick and choose who they want based on your attitude um, and that really helps you second number two get excited to learn something new you've never done this before it's a new craft would you ever walk into a hospital and say oh I'd like to do a brain surgery please no not not I. I maybe some people after a couple drinks maybe <laughs> yeah. after a couple drinks maybe after a, few a couple cocktails, drinks yeah. a few cocktails no but seriously we we don't we this is a craft and you're going to learn something new you're going to learn the entertainment business you're going to learn about plays and writers and you're going to learn uh, a completely different way to do things you know before corporations bought uh, a lot of the studios hollywood was its own insular thing because it was so unique the financials of it the way it worked, the way people did contracts, it's a completely new way of life. So get excited about learning that. That's not, And I'm going to talk about how you sustain that a little bit later, but you have to get excited to learn something new. You can't say, well, I just want to be a big star without learning all this stuff. Uh, you kind of have to know your business, that's all. Well, how do you get excited if you are somebody who, and I don't mean this word as negative as people use it sometimes, but if you're just kind of lazy, if you're somebody who would rather sit at home or, or what well, are the ways I mean, to get the, excited? The w ways to get excited about it is to, what I would do, quite frankly, is start flipping through plays, books, movies, um, uh, stand-up specials, anything that's in entertainment and see what hits you. Something will hit you. Uh, Jim Carrey, what was his way into being a movie star? It was stand-up comedy. Um, uh, Daniel Day-Lewis was an Irish actor. You never really know what your way in is going to be, but you want to find something that excites you. And if you really want something, you if you are going to be a veterinarian, you want to get excited about learning about animals. And you might say, oh, blood grosses me out. I don't want to cut open a dog. But you say, well, no, I have to get excited about helping the dog. Not that I'm there's blood, but that I'm actually helping the dog. Does that make sense? Yes. And I think this probably relates to a lot of different careers yeah. in general. Because when somebody you meet somebody new and you're about to be working with them, would you rather work with somebody who's excited to do the job yes. or somebody who is miserable about right. it and complains every second? Exactly. And that uh, that goes basically down to, you know, being yourself and if yourself is a negative person you probably want to work on that just in general before you start any business right yeah all right number three you have to love or you need to learn how to love entertainment try to find the meaning in it the best thing for me was that i uh did i do horror conventions and conventions where i sign autographs for people and you know, it was weird for me at the beginning because I thought this is a really strange thing. They're talking to me about a movie I did years ago. But then it clicked to me when I do a play, I get to meet the people in the lobby and they tell me, you know, what it meant to them. Well, this work has been around for ages, it's mostly for this movie, People Under the Stairs, I did in 91. And I now I get to meet the audience. I was with you the other day when you met yes. somebody who came yes. up to you and was like, you got that face, yeah. you got that face, I can't place yeah. it. And finally he did, and he was so excited. But the, what it taught me was entertainment is meaningful. It helps people get through tough times. 
it makes you relate to things. It opens up your heart and makes you uh, cry a little bit. Um, it 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 frees you up. It it lets you escape from the day. It le- lets you laugh. Bunch of different things. So if you don't like entertainment at all, like I said. This is probably not the thing for you, but it, you probably do if you want to be an actor to begin with. Um, do you no- ever meet actors that say to you, eh, I don't really watch? Because that happens to me all of the time. And it's like, well, how, why are you doing this? Some people come from theater and mm. they're not, they came from theater and they stick with theater and then they don't really watch a lot of movies and TV. But I, I guarantee you they probably See a lot have of plays. Some, some insight into something, even if they go to poetry or spoken word or anything they probably appreciate something in the arts even if it's music right you something know, you never know. Related. uh get an artist's mind this is an art form i know it's the entertainment industry but it's an art form sorry number four uh so get an artist's mind meaning this is a craft this is an art form so what do we study in our art form people human behavior they used to say marlon brando only uh, talked to you about you. He was only interested in you. Why? Because if he's going to learn how people act, he's got to know people. So he would really find out about who you were and talk to you about that because he really wanted to study human behavior. That's what we study. It's an art form. Walk around with a notebook and see an argument between two people and write down their behavior and study. You're, you're entering a craft. You're going to take classes and learn a new art form. If you were taking a painting class, you would have to learn the art of painting and lines and curves. It's the same kind of thing. So you want to start to adapt an artist's mind and be open to the idea that you are going to become an artist. And people in this industry, on the business side, when they hire an actor, they sure would like to hire someone who's an artist more than just, hey, can I get famous in front of the camera? Does that make sense? How much of your day are you thinking with your artist's mind? Do you have to have it 24-7? Some people do. I mean, I heard an interview with Jerry Seinfeld. He's like, I'm thinking of comedy all day long. All day long. Um, And I sometimes do, but now that I'm doing a sketch comedy group with a couple of friends, when I see something funny, all of a sudden it hits me and goes, and I'll call my partner and go, hey, man, this is such a funny idea. And he's like, write it down. It's hilarious. And things will happen. And just when you start opening up those floodgates, more things come in, if that makes sense. Right. What part of having an artist's mind affects your attitude? Do you feel like once you are having well, I mean, it? I think, it's, I think it, again, it, it makes you to be more taken seriously. It's like if a cameraman can look at a shot and say, wow, this is beautiful, or look at a sunset and go look at those colors. If you're working with that person, you go, oh, well, this guy appreciates the, you know, the vision, and he's a visionary person because he's my DP. So people are attracted to that. It helps your attitude. And um, your energy And your energy because you're passionate about what you're doing. And that is attractive because people like people who are committed and passionate about all of it right it makes them a well more well-rounded person to hire a lot of this i feel like is for entertainment industry but just in life in too. life just no to i make know it really and, is and have yeah. people in your life hey the best things i've learned in this industry i apply to my life all the time all the time uh number five become curious now this is sustaining the be excited about learning this is being curious and it also goes into what we just talked about be curious about other people who they are so if i'm talking to, we had a conversation. I mentioned a movie that you hadn't seen. You wrote it down, and then, or you had a recent thing, or, you know, um, and you, and you go watch the movie immediately because if someone references something, a movie that you don't know, go go watch it. Be curious about, you know, a person's point of view. If someone says, "Oh, Tim Burton's a great filmmaker," oh, I haven't seen that much Tim Burton. Be curious about it. Go watch all his movies. Go watch all the Coen Brothers movies if someone mentions that. If someone mentions a great TV series, watch it. Be curious. Always be learning because this is endless. Art is endless. And if you see like painters and they go through all their different stages, it's because it's always evolving. So keep yourself open and curious all the time. And And I feel like this one's about more than just the art, too. It's not just if somebody says that they like a book or a song or a a movie, but also if somebody says something out loud that you don't understand because just 
asking about it and so you know their point of view it. so you right. can learn right exactly if someone says oh this play was great and you go oh really what made it great why did you like it you right. know be very curious about and then you're going to learn points of view and then when you get auditions from different directors or producers you go oh i understand that because i study them and i understand what that's a tim burton audition is going to be a lot different than a sitcom audition Mm -hmm. And you need to know that, and you'll have learned that if you remain curious. Get excited to learn it, but then remain curious always. Oh, gosh, if you st show up Tim Burton stylized into a yeah. sitcom. Yeah, you're in trouble. Yeah, big you're trouble. You're in trouble. <laughs> All right, now we get into the craft. Open yourself up. Now, this is, in entertainment, you have to be vulnerable. Number six. Six, that's what I said. Yeah, I? well, you yeah. said we get into the craft. Oh, well, yeah, open yourself. Sorry. <laughs> Six, open yourself up, meaning the craft, meaning you have to be vulnerable. We all want to get back to the bet. Why do we do a lot of art and all this stuff when we're little kids? Um, when, you know, we put on smocks and paint all over the place and do singing and stuff. And then slowly as adults, a lot of us fade out of that. Well, we want to get back to that. We want to open ourselves up to that sense of play, the sense of fun. But more importantly, if you really want to be an actor, you have to do the work. And you can do this, but you have to be able to access your emotions. You have to be vulnerable. You have to be someone who can do a scene where you cry or can do a scene where you murder a busload of people because you have to access yourself. You have to open up the walls and the societal walls that say, oh, well, Roxy just spit on me, and I might say, well, uh, that's, uh, I don't know what's going on uh, in the middle of the podcast. But in an acting scene, I might get up and scream in her face, and she might scream back, because we want to be free with our emotions. And so we, that, we do that a lot in our acting classes and things like that, but you have to be able to access your emotions and be open to life's experiences, because if Roxy said hi to me one way and then said it hi a completely different way, it would affect me completely differently because I'm open. What are things that you find make people closed? Is it lifestyle so choices? Lifestyle choices, society, um, jobs, where you know, they're in an office environment where they obviously have to have a certain protocol and, and be a certain way. Um, so how can you actively up, tell yourself, like, be more open? You can't. You have to, that's part of taking an acting class and learning how to open yourself, learning how to get off yourself, thinking about yourself, and then you know, focusing on someone else. that It's kind of through the training that you do that, but you have to be ready for that. You can say, well, I'll be an actor, but I don't ever want to learn how to cry. Well, why would you close that door on yourself, you know? Right, or I'll be an actor, but I only ever want to do yeah, comedies. Yeah, I only want to do comedies. Only... Right. right, right. So you want to open yourself to everything. And again, it's not only just the craft, it's all of it, all the experiences. Uh, and, and people love that. Again, people love an actor who knows what they're doing. And it's just like saying if a cameraman said, I only shoot on this camera and I refuse to shoot on any other camera. Well, that guy's going to hurt himself as to the, opposed to the guy that says, yeah, I'll shoot on anything. I'll try anything. Which dovetails nicely into number seven. Ooh. Be flexible and spontaneous. Say yes to everything. Brian Cranston in his book, uh, uh, A Life in Parts, talks about when he was on Malcolm in the Middle, he told him, whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. They put him on a tr strap into a truck in his underwear. They covered him head to toe in live bees. They, because he said, I'm up for anything. So this business is not for someone who is rigid, who is closed, who wants to know when the paycheck's coming and, and have everything planned out. It can change on a dime. I've gotten calls on a Friday night that I have to be in New York first thing the, the next day and I have to take a red eye. Um, I've had parts that I thought I was leaving uh, right before I was having a baby sit uh, series three months and because my manager made some screwy deal uh, they replaced me with a Canadian and I thought I was leaving to you know make a ton of money for my new baby I mean things change on a dime and you have to be open and ready for that how often Sean do you know two weeks before an audition you've read the whole script you've had ample time to prep how often is that the way it goes as compared no, to no, the no, night you before get, you no, get a you call get, you get something two two days before and then, you know, busy times, you go here, okay, now we're just trying to squeeze these in to fit, you know, one in the morning, one in the afternoon, and they're three completely different parts. And you, you have to get enough sleep, you have to do, but you have to get, do the work to be ready for those auditions. Some days are harder, some days you're pulling out your hair wishing you had more to do. 
um, but you have to be flexible. And if you're not, you're rigid, and that incites complaining. And no one in this business, like we said, likes complaining. No have one you likes complaining. had to learn anything uh, with a very short amount of time, like a new accent oh, yeah. or? I was in just recently Silicon Valley. Um, I was sitting there with guys, and the woman walked out and said, I'm so sorry, they completely changed the sides. Um, they they did a rewrite, and it's all. And some of the guys panicked and were like, I need a day, I need to come back later this afternoon. And I just went, okay. And I, she said, well, it's mainly the main character, and the beats are generally the same, but we have to, we have to change and cut some things. And it was fine. So um, that flexibility, I know because I wasn't really right for the part, but I got a call back and was pinned for it. So, and they said he was so professional and could do it right off the bat. And that was huge for me. So I got an in in that show, which and I never would have gotten just because I was like, okay. By the way, casting directors stay working and remember those kind yeah, of things for the of next course. project they're casting for exactly. whatever it is exactly uh that leads us into number eight put on blinders put on blinders be ignorant not okay well it sounds like everything i'm saying is not to be ignorant what i'm <laughs> saying is be ignorant in studying how hard it is in the business and the trends that are everything's against you well, it, everything's always against us. If we, want, if we wanted to focus on that, we could. Go into it, take some classes, do get the job that supports those classes. We'll talk about all this stuff specifically uh, later. But I came in here, and I had fun being at the Groundlings because it was fun. And I liked the people, and I liked writing sketches, so it was fun. And because I was having fun and only thinking about that, not thinking, oh, does the teacher like me? Oh, do I have to... You know, I, I hope I get into the next class. Oh, I just thought, oh, this is a fun idea for a skit. I'll write that. So just stay focused on doing the work and enjoying the work. That's what I mean on putting putting on blinders. Because there's a ton of things you could think about. But I've learned recently that there's useful thoughts and non-useful thoughts. If you're about to, you know, uh, defuse a bomb and you sit there and think about how I could die if it blows up, that's really not useful. You should think about how I'm going to do the work so I don't do that, if that makes sense. So that's what I mean by putting on blinders. Gleefully be ignorant and just enjoy doing what you're doing, and I promise you more things will happen that way than if you angst about the business. Any tips for people whose minds start to wander on how to put those blinders back on and yeah, stay very, focused? Yeah, very simply. It's attention and intention. Your intention is to stay focused. And when you go, which everyone's does, you're a human being, you just bring it back and say, okay, I just need to watch a movie that I like. I need to come home and watch a movie that I like. And that's what I need to do. Um, so that's what I mean. It's just constantly do the things, take the actions, and then slowly those thoughts will fade and you'll fall right back into place. Which goes into number nine, uh, that's a little, the, kind of, which is staying focused. And the other part of this is the acting and the business. You are a business. Become a business. Be professional. Be, uh, show up on time. Be early. Have a notebook. Take notes of which casting directors you've met. Write thank you cards. Be persistent. If you want something, be calm and persistent, but not bugging them. Don't bring emotions into it. Know that there's an acting side. You need to have that hat on, which is vulnerable and open. Then you take that hat off and put on the business side, which is when they ask me to get 10 headshots over to my agent, I get the 10 headshots over to my agent. Or they say, I need this reel uploaded, I upload that reel. Or if they say, we need this audition in by 5 o'clock, you don't call them at 7 and say, can you do it later? You're, you're a business. And so that is the second part. They want to see that you're artistically viable, but they also want to see that you're a business person and easy to work with. That makes you easy to work with. Is part of being becoming a business having the right people work for you because that they're employees of your business, so to speak? Yeah, absolutely. And then again, you know, people, actors go in and go, oh, I don't know what to do. I don't know what. Just be a business. Pick the one you, that makes sense for you. See how that goes. If it doesn't, move on. That's what they would do. They would hire, They would put you in their roster. If they can't get you any auditions or any bookings, then they'll let you go. So you can do the same to them. So just be a business. Don't you know? It's really hard because we're in our, our business is being our, our craft is being artistic and vulnerable. 
our business is being simple and, and calm and straight. So, um, so uh, this is what we have to learn. Like I said, the hats. Take the hat, business hat off on when it's time to deal with your business stuff. Put on the actor hat when it's time to do the craft, when you've got the job. But when you're on a set, first you have to do the business stuff, the paperwork, meet the people, know where you're going to be, get your, and then you do the craft. Or you go uh, work on your lines, get vulnerable, get emotionally ready to do the scenes you're going to do. But you need to know there's two parts. That's why this show's byline is the show and the business. So that's what we're trying to explore here. And they're both equally important. If that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, then we go into number 10, which is the most important, I think. Know why you are becoming an actor in the entertainment business or in any part of the business. Know why. Know why you're doing it. That has nothing to do with acting or, or being on TV or, you know, being in a movie so your family can see it. I'm talking about it has nothing to do with that. Why do you want to do this? Because there's a lot more to that. Because guess what? We don't act that much. Yeah. We don't literally act that much. We audition, and then we act. Now, a lot of people who are proactive, and we'll talk about that, putting up their own plays and, and um, uh, writing their own stuff, shooting their own stuff, that's great. But I'm talking about why do you do this? For me, it came in terms of a crisis when I was did a show that I was very tough. We'll do an episode on that one time. Uh, but it almost made me want to quit the business. I was only in the business for like five years. And it caused me anxiety to the point where I went to therapy. And they said, well, why do you want to do this besides acting? And I thought, what a stupid question. But it took me a long time and I thought about it. And my answer was because I, I like not doing the same thing every day, number one. And number two, I love meeting new people. So that will sustain me through all the hard times because I'm still, even if it's a hard time, it's different from the day before or last month, and I'm probably going to meet new people down at the unemployment office. Kidding. Are there, <laughs> do you feel like there aren't other jobs where that would be the case? Uh, that are so, well, I mean, yes, obviously, like real estate agent or, you know, but yeah, you could be a real estate agent and cover those two bases. But that was, those were mine. Mm. Yours what are can some yours other examples? Be, like what? So yours might yours might be. Um, I want to uh, travel. You know, I want to try to travel as much as possible. So what if you say, well, I'm just going to try to get in a troupe that does uh, that goes around the country, or I'm going to try to write a show that uh tr that i can take to different cities what if that's one of your reasons what if your reason is i want to uh, be near my family and your family lives in atlanta and atlanta is now a hub for acting or i want to stay in los angeles because i really love los angeles or new york or chicago or london or you know one of those cities um i want to stay here and so that's another reason so just uh, the reasons that have nothing to do with the craft itself and the business itself because it's a lifestyle choice and the best example is a friend of mine was doing a uh she was writing music with a partner and she was in the music business and trying to break in and this guy said oh i have to leave because i got a gig that is all of, uh, in washington and so i'm going to be leaving she goes we're in the middle of writing an album and he goes yeah but this is a paid gig and he left and she realized she's way too pragmatic. She likes pragmatism and know what's happening, you know? And so the music industry wasn't for her. I mean, you remember the Beatles were in different bands. Right. They weren't in the same band. So, you know, that this stuff happens in the music industry. So is art not enough for anybody, do you think? Is there anybody out there who just wants to be an artist, who just loves music or just loves film, yes, and that's not enough? But there's a lifestyle that comes with it, and you have to be okay with that. That's what I'm saying. Find the meaning in the lifestyle that is okay with you. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, it, it does make sense. I think this, like you said, it was a hard one for you. Yeah. I think that will be a hard one for the people listening right now. It's yeah. challenging to figure out because I think a lot of people grew up thinking, I love this because 
I love telling people stories right. or I love performing or I love right. making people laugh or any of the right. things that come with the actual art, right. not the lifestyle. Life. You need to have, you need to live the life to do well in the art and the business. Hmm. You have to have the lifestyle with it or you're not going to make it. There's going to be things that you just go crazy over and you say, well, I want to settle down and have uh, steady money coming in and raise a family. Well, that's going to be tougher. Yeah. You and know? It sounds I'm, like money probably isn't a, yeah, a good one for number yeah, 10. Yeah, <laughs> Right. Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, are you okay sleeping, you know, in a crappy apartment with a bunch of people like I did when I started for a few, for say, oh, I could do that for a couple of years if, if I could still do this. So that's what I mean. And then, you know, I've used all these. And I've used these specifically. I'm sitting here because I used these tactics specifically to have this podcast. Now, I didn't have a goal of I want to have a podcast on After Buzz TV. But because I was myself and I used uh, these uh, 10 facets of attitude, um, I'm here hosting the show. And I'll walk through it really quickly. Yeah, please. Because so, did you do this consciously? Were you like, number one, check? No, did not that. at all. I just realized that they really fit and they offered up a reason for this success so number one was being myself i was totally myself i saw you guys kevin underago roxy i think it was juliet yeah so before uh we do a show for after buzz called the tomorrow show yeah. with kevin juliet um who you guys might know from some of the after shows here it was ashley daniels and myself mm -hmm. uh and we were at coffee bean we always go to yes. coffee bean before the show and, and we're in our star trek uniforms in their star trek uniforms as always as always and i but no, i didn't know that and i saw them and being myself i'm a friendly open person who loves meeting new people like i said and so i engage and if they don't engage back that's fine it, it's fine but i saw them and i said oh, you must be going to a convention because I do conventions where people do cosplay. And they turned and said, no, we're doing a podcast. And I went, a podcast? Like, I didn't really get it. And then Kevin came up, noticed me, and said... He pointed at you and said, you're, you're famous. famous. <laughs> and I went, oh, okay. You got that face, And Sean. I got that face. And, and so we started talking. And because I'm myself, I didn't back off or get stressed. I laughed and we chatted. And uh, so number two, getting excited. I got excited about learning who he was, what his, uh, he, he loved hearing about the play. I started getting excited to tell him about my play and um, what I'm doing. And he was excited to learn about my stuff. Uh, loving entertainment, number three, loving entertainment. Oh, we're gonna go through the cards, I didn't realize. <laughs> we're gonna love entertainment. Uh, I um, uh, was great because we shared a bunch of stuff about the play and what it meant and comedy and things like that So because we had a love of entertainment and we started throwing around movie titles and stuff like that We had a connection as the girls are in the back talking the, being yes. like he's the guy from never been kissed We <laughs> love that movie. Oh my god uh, Number four doesn't really fit with this one, but number five being curious. I was definitely curious about what um, uh, What a podcast cast was and what kevin did and and why and we were wearing star trek why uniforms wearing and what star that had trek to do with anything and how he was saying you know listen i would love to help you me and maria and, and everybody would love to help you promote your play and who you are and stuff like that so uh and and be a guest on his show so i became curious about who he was and what he does um opening myself emotionally i wept nightly <laughs> kidding, kidding. That doesn't really apply. Uh, number seven, I was flexible and spontaneous. Um, he said, we're coming to the show. We're going to come this weekend. And then they said, contact, uh, I think it was Juliet or you. I did. They said yes. And then things came up. It, it canceled a lot. Now, at any time, I could have said, well, I, I thought you were coming and I'm furious. But I know this business and I know things come up. So I was flexible and fine. And so they thought they were coming two weeks after I met them. They ended up coming two months after I met them. But that didn't matter. Because I you was, stayed on it, too. I was open and flexible to their schedules and things that changed. And, and there was nothing that really showed me that they were backing off, which is number eight, which is I put my blinders on. Unless they said to me, we're not really interested in this. I mean, I had a, I met a, a celebrity from a TV show recently on St. Patrick's Day, and they said, oh, let's hang out. And I tried to reach out and hang out with them. And uh, they kept on kind of blowing me off a little bit. And then finally I wrote, hey, just hit me up if you ever want to uh, get for drinks like you mentioned. And he said, will do. 
And I went, okay. Right. So that's done. So that's fine. It's, it's fine. It's a, you know, I didn't take it that hard. But with you guys, I kept going calm and steady and put my blinders on. They said they want to work with me. So until they say something changes, I'm going to believe that. Right. And Until we say, unfortunately, we won't be able to make exactly. it. Or sorry, or, we're, we're just too busy right yeah, now. Yeah, or good luck with your career. Or, yeah, something really like... Better luck next better time. Better luck next time or anything <laughs> like that. Until they told me differently, I just put my blinders on and focused. Okay, they said they want to work with me. But uh, then uh, that takes me to number nine perfectly, which is I treated it like a business. Um, you said personally, there's been people that are, you know, that are hard possibly hard to work with but I handled myself correctly I was never forceful I was never uh, emotional I put on my business hat when I dealt with that side of it and I was persistent but not pushy because right early on I said to you please keep following up right and you said got it and you didn't take that like she doesn't understand my time. She, you, right. you weren't an artist about it. You were a business person. Somebody asked me to do something, and I'm trying to get something, so I'm going to do that. And thing. I also knew that when you said follow up on it, that didn't mean every three hours. Right. Right. You know, I knew what that meant. I checked in. You know, and then I would say very specifically, "Oh, maybe when should I check back? Uh, he's on vacation, maybe three weeks. Great." So immediately, I'd get off the phone and go. Uh, contact Roxy in three weeks and put it in my calendar and then forget about it. Move on to something else. So you actually do, anytime somebody says, hit me up or contact me then, you put it in your calendar? Absolutely. That's smart. Right, being a business person. I'm working with a guy that I love who does conventions in upstate New York. He he said I, he's got a fall show. I always do a spring show. I'd love to do a your fall show. He said, hey, just uh, hit me up later, still figuring it out. So I thought... I'm going to give him six weeks. So I gave him six weeks, and just last week I said, hey, what's going on? He's like, still figuring it out. And then I said, so when should I follow up? And he said, how about next week? And so I put it in my calendar for next week. Great. So that's it. You know, that I, I became a business person. And then move on. And then moved on. And then know why? Because, you know, for me, it was, again, it fit it perfectly. I've never done this. So, you know, new things, new things. This is a new thing. Different every day, different every day. And I met a lot of fun new people. They did end up coming to my play. Uh, Kevin, Roxy, I think Juliet, Juliet, Christy. Yeah. I mean, we had and we had a great night. It was super fun. And so it fills all the things that I really enjoy. So I never went. Ooh, ooh, that's the guy who does After Buzz. I want to get a podcast and ran up to him in the coffee shop. I was just myself. And things unfolded naturally. So, you know, it all fit nicely. And because I used all these, because I had the right attitude, as Kevin said, that's why he gave me this opportunity. Right. So that really has a lot to do with it. Anthony, maybe we get a little, like, in the... A little applause. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you to our live studio audience yes, for that our applause, live our very natural audience. applause. Oh, stop it, you guys. Sit down. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so, so those are really important. If you have any thoughts or questions about the attitude uh, things, um, please hit us up on iTunes. You can, uh, if you like what we're saying, you can give us five stars, leave yeah. a comment. Uh, you can go to YouTube. Uh, put the comments if you liked it thumbs up and leave us some comments if you have any questions or thoughts about the attitude i'd love to hear them we'd love to hear them yeah we want to do every week we want to look at some of the questions right. and this is why sean is here and I, kind of why i'm here but i'm still learning too i'm like you guys mm-hmm. to answer these questions so that anything he learned in the decades he's been doing this Hopefully, we don't have to learn the hard way. Hopefully, we get to learn from Sean and ask these questions, and he can explain. If you're having a hard time with, I don't know, um, flexibility, and you have a specific question about it, or even you want tips, ask Sean on iTunes, on YouTube. We're going to find those comments, and we're going to talk about it on air and follow up so that it really is an interactive experience for you guys at home. That's what we want. Yeah, absolutely. And and so another aspect of the show that we really wanted to explore was, so I've had almost 30 years of experience. Roxy's trying to break in to the acting side right now. So um, each week we're going to do a couple minutes on what I've gone through and we're also going to do 
a couple minutes on what Roxy is working on in her acting and or what we spoke about and thoughts about what we spoke about. So you really get a bookend of someone who's been in it for a long time and someone who's starting out, which hopefully she's mirroring some of the um, problems or issues that you're having breaking in. Right. So what did you think about today's uh, attitude things? I mean, listen, I, I'm i a little biased, but I think you have an, a fantastic business attitude. Oh, thank you so much. No, I do. <laughs> thank I think you. I, I think you that. really have a fat, fantastic business attitude. And I think, uh, you know, I don't feel like, you know, that you're not, disingenuine. Uh, no, I have a hard time with some of these, though. I Which will one say. would you so, say that you so, do? Trusting and being myself and, and excitement for it all. The the artist ones, I have less of a hard time with. Mm-hmm. Um, even flexibility and um, spontaneity, I'm like, yeah, I, I love doing new, right. fresh things. I have a very hard time with blinders. Um, I get very, <laughs> I, I like that Anthony in the booth oh, is yeah, trying yeah, he's to He's trying guess. to catch he's up. He's like, which one is, which which one? One is she uh, like going to have a hard time with? <laughs> blinders are really hard for me because there's so much noise. Okay. And you're hearing it from everybody. I don't know if it happened when you moved out here. I've been out here for nine years, but right. everybody at home. When are you moving back here? Right. What are you doing? Uh, right. How long? This is taking a long time. Right. Have you booked it yet? What can I watch you in this week? Right. Uh, and obviously, I'm I'm well versed in the hosting world, but in the acting world, mm-hmm. uh, I'm relatively new. And so, so I would give you advice. Yeah. So please. my my family, my mom especially, because she was a theater nerd, and so she was kind of living vicariously through me. Um, she would call every week and say so have you gone on any auditions what did you go on how did they go what about that one last week did you book it and very calmly and i even had this discussion with uh, my girlfriend recently when i had that little dry spell and she's like oh i'm so excited you have an audition when do you want to and i said you know what let's and i explained it i said this is literally just part of my life and my job so, yes, I ask you how your job is doing, and she'll have issues at her job, and I'll have issues at my job. But I just want to make it part of the job, not anything special or fantastic or horrible and tragic. So she was great. She totally understood. And my, my mom, I said, I just have to be very blunt and say, I'm so excited that you guys are supportive, and it means a lot to me. But let me, I'll tell you things when things are important. Right. Just know that I'm working and working towards it. That's all you really need to know. So if you were at a corporate job and you were trying to get the assistant manager position, they wouldn't say, well, what happened this way? Do you think you're going to get the assistant manager? You wouldn't, they wouldn't say that. In six months, you'd call them and go, oh, I got the assistant manager. Or you'd say, oh, that, that person who was there six months before me got it. I didn't get it. Right. I didn't get it. It's hard enough, I feel like, when you're hearing no enough. seven times a it's week every enough. single day, and then you have to say it out loud to and your parents and your siblings and your family and your boyfriend and your... So that's why you don't. And you just you tell just them. Don't. You just say, listen, this is my job. And when there's something worth talking about, I will explain it to you. The other one that I'm having a little bit of a hard time with is treating it like a business, no personal feelings, because I work with and audition with a lot of people that I meet socially. Right. And that has been challenging for me, interacting with these people that are your friends and then going in to try to book for them, whether it's a casting director that I've become. Does that make you nervous or anxious or do you? Yes. I would say a little bit of that, but also it, it feels like it's just a different energy and trying to stay in the right, I guess it's blinders again, stay in the right mindset so you're not thinking well, this is my friend, so should I say hello? And is that what I should be thinking about right now? You and handle this... that audition like you would handle any audition. And be, be whoever auditioning Roxy is, that's who auditioning Roxy is when you audition. That's it. And you, unless you want to say what I would recommend, do your audition, do it the way you want, feel good about your choices. They're just a someone to audition. You need to be more focus on I'm so excited I'm getting into this room and I wouldn't have done that had I not networked properly so that focus on that you're even in the room because that's great because mm. maybe you wouldn't got it through an agent or anything like that but you got it through your networking so be grateful about that do the uh, audition that you want and then when it's all over then go oh are you going to Randy's barbecue or what then do that and then hug them and leave and still throw out the audition and leave 
to go in That's as professional as possible. As professional as possible. The minute you finish. If they lead that and say, oh, my God, are you going to Kevin's Barbecue? No, 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 no. And then literally I would say before you start, you say, can you just give me one second and just take a couple breaths and get into actor Roxy. And they'll appreciate that. They will see that and go, oh, okay. She's not just our friend that we had a beer with the other night. She's actually doing this. Right. Okay. That's what I mean. You're, you're getting into the artistry of it. And they go, oh, I appreciate that because she's an artist. Okay. And she's taking it seriously. That's right. my advice for those two I like things. it, Sean. Yeah. So I'm going to uh, work on those this yes. week. Yes. So listen, uh, this is going to be a weekly show. We're going to cover a lot of topics. Uh, next uh, topic we are going to cover is let's say you live not in L.A. or not in New York and you're interested in acting. I have a thing that I uh, co-wrote with a uh, comedic um, character actor. Well, he's actually a character actor. I mean, he's done tons of drama like me and tons of comedy. Uh, an old friend from Groundling, Christopher Darga. If you looked him up, you'd know his face. Um, that's what happened to me. You said it, and I was like, her. oh, this guy. This guy. He's going to be in here with me, and we are gonna. We wrote this thing a few years ago, and we've had three people that we went in just one workshop, three people from one workshop in Nashville five years ago moved to L.A. because this is called the two-year plan, and it's prepping for that two-year plan while you're at home and then how to execute that uh, two-year plan, and that's going to be coming up. Uh, in the next that's the next topic we're going to cover I love that that is a lot about the business part of it too like yeah he, here is here's, here's how, how you do, do this how to get here and how to get started on the craft and that's amazing some people don't know how to take that first step yeah so yeah and I it, love that you're doing it's that. gonna be great so uh if you want to find me I am at that guy smw on twitter and instagram I am on Facebook, uh, Sean Whalen Peeps. It's a group. You can do that. Um, I am very grateful to be here, to Roxy, to Kevin Underago, to everyone here at After Buzz. And uh, I'm going to say this every week, and I'm very grateful. Thank you for letting me be part of your journey. And we'll see you next week. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. Herein are those of the hosts only. Do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.